Yeah, you definitely gotta do a sequel. Yeah, I still want. I'm, I'm still. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about doing it since you brought up the, the ideas you have for it. Um, and and and, and uh, hopefully, I'm still. I still have that Dirty Harry fan film in mind. I, I would like maybe maybe I maybe I can maybe I'll see if I can do it this summer because I really want to get that done. I haven't forgotten that guy. I know I talked about it a lot. I made some videos about it. But I really, I really need to get that done, probably in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and if you want, uh, Matt, if you want to, you can help me. Uh, you can help me uh, make it, make it get some contacts. Uh, if you have any contacts for it, uh, you can help me make it. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Now this, um, I know, I know I'll probably, it'd be cool to come down maybe like this winter too. Like, not this winter now, but the next winter, I would like to come down too. And like hang out. Yeah. Do some supporting Rambo stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I came up with, I, I, yeah, I, supporting Rambo, yeah. Yeah, I came up with some good ideas for the for the Dirty Harry fan film. Like, uh, I'm not since the fan film is uh, I'm not actually remaking it. It's like I'm I'm changing a little bit of the stuff mm -hmm. around. So, and uh, it's gonna take place around uh, around the Casey Anthony verdict. Oh yeah, it's kind of like a period piece. It's kind of like a period piece because it takes place around before and after the Casey Anthony verdict, and you know because Dirty Harry it deals with those issues and everything, so it takes place around 2011, uh, uh, before and after the Casey Anthony verdict. Very well, Dirty Harry is tracking the, the a, a character like the Scorpion Killer down and stuff like that. I would love to help you with that. Yeah, we'll get some like squibs and stuff. Squibs. Some blood squibs. Yeah, I, I want to include some fight scenes. There's gonna be some good fight scenes in it. I want. There's gonna be some good fight scenes in it too. Sweet. Yeah, you've been you you you've been playing this one for a while now. The Dirty Harry one. Yeah, uh, since uh, I, since yeah, since 2011, man, it's been it's been one of my uh, big passions, you know. I, um, I I haven't get, I haven't given up, given up on it. Mm -hmm. I, I'll ne I never will. Hopefully, I'll get this done next summer. I mean, this summer, next summer, hopefully, because I I really I really I really want to get this done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to help out with that. Maybe I can come down and do it. Or maybe we could mm -hmm. when when you come here, maybe we could do film. Uh, we could do pieces for it too. Cause it's really nice and urban out here. We could do okay, pieces uh, for it too. Mm -hmm. Down here. I'll, I'll think about that. And there's also there's also some places down here that kind of make it look like it's San Francisco. So I would think yeah, uh, uh, maybe some add some of that stuff in because there's some places around here that make it look like it's San Francisco. And I I do want to film some stuff in San Francisco as well. Hmm. That'd be cool. That'd be that would be a wicked road trip. San Francisco. What were you saying about that? Awesome. It's awesome to it's awesome to me because I kinda like taking road trips anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Especially with supporting Rambo, I said most definitely, yeah, we're we still want, I still want to get that out of the way, away too. And most definitely, have you have you guys ever ha had some ideas for the movie lately? Well, I know I'm probably going to be able to start writing back on it. I'm guessing somewhere between somewhere between April and July, because June is yeah, filming. Yeah, uh, I've been busy. I just been too busy with. I just been too busy with school by that, that I just haven't had the chance, but uh, but, but what, I, I, most of I have a lot of ideas. For, but what for what's that. good is that we have like a lot of it done in structure anyway. You know, we have we have majority of yeah. the of the idea there. You know, like I'd say about what seventy five percent of it. 
So it's just about fitting it together, I would say now. Mm-hmm. You know? But yeah, like yeah, I, I was like I was telling Gabo, it's kind of, I, I was just telling I was telling Gabo it, it's kinda of like the concept of do the right thing, but instead of deal with race it deals with age and the shit going on in Hollywood. It deals with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be cool, man. It's gonna be nice to uh to like just get and you know group everything we also talked about some ideas for closing the movie some ideas for what? ideas for characters you can balance that for the movie mm-hmm. uh, the uh, yeah, characters yeah mm-hmm. yeah what's cool is like the that we can we well sorry <laughs> Yeah, I, I was thinking about, yeah, I mentioned how Gabo can play one of the, the club members of the Rambo fan club and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cool, too, to, like, build build kind of, like, the set and stuff. You know what we should do is we should just go find an actual motel that's big enough to fit the set in. Okay. I just filmed there for like two days. Yeah, I'll think about that. Because a lot of it yeah, takes yeah, place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like a clubhouse. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the yeah, like the clubhouse, like yeah, the base. Yeah. Yeah, the motel being the clubhouse. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And like I said, there are some sub stories about uh there's there are some sub stories there's one in New York about the the guy who's who was a who was a Rambo fan back in the day but he but he uh but he grew out of it and the, when Rambo four came out he, he kinda grew back into it. He has this girlfriend who's younger than him and they're engaged and she's kind of like an airhead she's not she doesn't understand his his obsession with rambo and some of the older stuff she's kind of into stuff like sex in the city she's kind of an airhead she likes to go out and buy she's a fashion geek and and uh and then it, it kind of creates this like this tension with and kind of messes up their engagement and everything <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I actually wrote. I actually wrote that scene in the script. I wrote a scene. I wrote. I actually wrote that scene. And I gave it to Matt, and he he, he really liked it. It's a really good scene. Mm-hmm. You should send it to Gabo. Oh man, I drank. Yeah, yeah I drank a so whole thing of Hawaiian punch. I can't believe it. I'm gonna be up until like three in the morning. Yeah, I saw that. It was home. It was, it was really cool. And then you... <laughs> there's like nothing left. Did I tell you the story behind this fruit punch? Yeah, I got some. I got some Pepsi's. <laughs> you got some Pepsi's? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this this Hawaiian punch. Oh my god. So I work in 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 the area called Verdun. Which is like a really sketchy area. Like, really sketchy area to go to. So I go to like the grocery store and I just see like four of these for four bucks. So I was like, hey, can't go wrong with that. Because nothing here is that cheap. So I get in line with my, you know, my Hawaiian punch. I got like, uh, uh, like four of them. And in front of me, there's like an old man. In front of the old man... Mm -hmm. There's like this little old lady, like tiny, kind of imagine like Tweety, Tweety's caretaker, you know, yeah, little old lady. Yeah, her. And she's talking to the cashier. I think she was trying to return something. And the guy that was in front of me, the old man, he starts going all crazy. 
And he starts, you know, saying, because everyone here is French, right? So he starts saying, like, you know, this is Quebec. We don't talk. We don't talk English here. We only talk French here. Don't serve this lady because she's English. Kick her out of the store. But he's like screaming at her. He's like, Mon tabarnak, the kiss the call this. And like yelling at her and going crazy. So I said something out of my breath to the effect of, This is Canada. We can speak however the fuck we want. And the guy heard me and he turns around and he starts causing trouble, like, oh, what'd you say, kind of thing. So my friend, who's, who's more French than I am, starts ragging, ragging on the guy in French, saying pretty much the same thing. Long story short, it took 25 minutes to get this, maybe a half an hour in line, and uh, I almost got my teeth knocked out. <laughs> It was horrible. Oh, it was horrible. But there's all these like language law things going on now here. So it's uh everyone's kinda getting all crazy about it. It's not too cool. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah.